Welcome to the Overflow Worship Podcast, where we serve and support leaders so you can serve and support your local church. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Overflow Worship Podcast. I'm your host, Andrea Olson. Thank you for joining me today. So today we are jumping back into part two of my conversation with Austin Ludwig from Riverstone Church in Kennesaw, Georgia. He's a worship pastor and worship artist and among many other things. So if you missed the first half, you can go back and listen to that one and then come back here and join us for part two. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's like that whole concept of we want to, you know, raise up so many people around us that, you know, we're kind of worked out of a job, so to speak. Like you don't need me on the platform anymore. <laughs> yeah. Um, and of course you're you're probably still there, but it's there's so many, you know, capable people who have the depth. It's not just the skill, right? Mm-hmm. But it's like you're saying, it's that that depth um that is so important because there's there's a lot of people who have the talent and skill to step up on stage, but that is such a tiny piece of the puzzle, you know, when we're talking about this, this huge job of leading people in worship. Mm-hmm. And, and so, you know, for, for you in, in your job in the ministry in the church that you work for, I'm, I'm sure some of the questions that we would get from listeners would be very practical. Like, okay, so what does that look like week in, week out? Mm-hmm. Um, and so are there a couple of things that pop into your mind that you intentionally do as the worship pastor that kind of are because you're thinking about this whole idea of culture and discipleship and, you know, all of the things that we're talking about today? Yeah. Well, you know, I think the reality is, is, is it's nearly impossible to go deep um, once a, one day out of the week, yeah. you know, with your team on a Sunday morning, that that's not the environment to build relational equity. Um, and, and so there's two things like one is just, is, is really looking for ways to, to, just connect with people. If it's having coffee, lunch within mm-hmm. reason, like figuring out, you know, even if it's just once a month, staying connected with people and making sure that you're approachable, that you're accessible, that you yeah. have an open door policy, so to speak, where people know that they can come to you and um, process through things. And you'll discover that, you know, like the people that need it will, it, it'll be evident. It'll, they'll gravitate mm-hmm. towards it. They'll pursue it. Um, and that's the good ground. That's the good soil uh, uh, that, that I feel like that's how the Lord will highlight it. Um, but I mean, something I've definitely discovered is that, you know, I, we, we're not a massive church, but we're a decent size. And so we've, it comes back to that recreating myself. Like I can't disciple everybody on our team. Right. You know, I can't, yep. I can't meet with everybody every single week. Um, be, you know, and that's just the reality margin. You know, I think Jesus yeah. did this beautiful thing in this I don't want to open Pandora's box, but I, I really think that Jesus, Jesus was always approachable, but he was, but he wasn't always accessible, meaning like he had mm. limits. He had yep. to spend time with his father and he prioritized pouring into his 12 disciples so that they could pour out. Right. And yeah. we see that multiplication disciples who make disciples. Yeah. So eventually as things grow, you, we have to be aware of when to pivot and, and empower people to pour into the, to people mm. because we, Otherwise, it's not sustainable. It comes back to that. Mm-hmm. But practically, just man, just take people out for lunch, meet them for coffee. Like you know, if if you have a bigger team and you feel like that's overwhelming to do that with the busyness of the world we live in, then you know, get a group of people together and don't do it under the context of I'm here to pour into you and mentor you, or I'm here to do you know, yeah. Just hang out, hang out, and 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 like be aware that God's presence is there and. And, you know, before you hang out with people, you know, say, okay, Holy Spirit, like come and shepherd these conversations how you want. And he Mm -hmm. will. Um, For us, we got to a point where we had most of our 20s and 30s, our younger, you know, millennial-ish Gen Z group generation Mm -hmm. at our church. So many of them were serving on our teams in some capacity already. We tried a lot of things. We tried small groups for worship teams. We tried doing like community nights where we'd hang out just to cultivate that for, I mean, two years trial and error, like we feel like to no avail, there was like something that really stuck that worked. Um, but throughout this whole time, I was meeting with people, you know, like as much as I could sustaining relationships. Um, and eventually, 
and in 2020, we prayed about it and we actually decided with a group of people who are some worship leaders, some uh, musicians, people just on our teams already, we'd cultivated friendship, relationship, and have done life together for a few years in ministry. And we all are part of serving and worship um, that they're the, that group of people don't didn't see themselves like as, Oh, I'm a guitarist. I'm a guitar player. I'm a worship leader. They're like, I'm a disciple of Jesus. I'm called to make disciples. And so I looked around me, people within reach, and there's about seven or eight people that Mm. are hungry to pour into others who happen to do something in music Mm. and serve on our team. And we decided to start a twenties and thirties gathering where Mm. we do, we just gather twice a month and then we do one offsite gathering. Um, and it's kind of crazy because it ended up becoming, it started out as a community. Then it became the avenue that we're releasing music under for the church. So it's mm. like kind of this, they cross pollinate. Mm, and so now cool. the the group of people that is leading our 20s and 30s ministry at the church are all people pretty much for the most part. Now it's grown and we've acclimated more leaders. But for the most part, the origin of it, were all people who were served on our worship mm. teams. And wow. so we launched a 20s and 30s gathering and we do a night of wonder one once a month where we just focus on just encounter and Jesus worship. And then we completely do away for the most part with worship. And we do nights of connection and conversation where we just do a small teaching and we have, we split up into groups and we talk and we pray for each other. And, um, and that's just been super fruitful post pandemic, wow. like getting that yeah. place back to connection. So um, that's, I, I want to say that that's like, that's been our journey the past couple of years. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if that like could happen with everybody, but it, it kind of evolved into that for us. And we just, yeah. Saw it, but I will say it just started with a small group of people that um, we just were intentional with, um, mm-hmm. and and vice versa. They're intentional with me, so mm-hmm. yeah, I love that, and I think it's it, it's just such a great uh, a great example and reminder for all of us that it's okay to go through trial and error with it. You know, because yeah. I think a lot of times I talk with worship pastors, and they're like, well everybody on our team is too busy or every, you know, like they kind of, cause everybody has their own unique culture and context and, you know, group of people with different, you know, you know, there's, there's a church that I work with often that a lot of their people work jobs that are night shifts. And so, Mm -hmm. you know, it's like, well, they can't, they can't do things in the evening when a lot, you know, a lot of other people can. And so it's, it's finding what works for your context and giving, I think this is a great way to give people permission and just remind them like, you can try something. If it doesn't work, it doesn't mean that like, oh, we're just not cut out for this. (laughs) Yes. Yeah. And we have to be careful about how we measure fruit as well. You know, fruit in the kingdom looks so different. And yeah, like we, I don't know, like, how do you measure? Like, are you like, if it's working or it's not, you know, at the end of the day, we're, we're looking to, to love people well. Yeah. And, um, and if we're looking at numbers or we're looking at, you know, I don't know, like, how do you quantify that? I think at the end of the day, we just have to be faithful and, and like, and, 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 you know, like everyone's man, I suggest reading like book by, um, Henry now, is it necessary endings? Hmm. I, I suggest it, basically we just have to know when to bury something that's not working. <laughs> like yeah. we have to have discernment and wisdom. Cause I think that was our problems. Like for a while we were trying stuff and we we're like, you know, it's a paradox. It's like, well, how do you know if you can't measure if it is or isn't working? I think that right. just comes back to the gift of discernment and wisdom. And we just say, okay, like one thing that I really thought was going to work was us doing small groups for our worship teams. And it, it didn't. And, and it got to, it got to a point even like probably where we should have shifted before we kept mm. on doing it. Sure. Um, and I wish we had, you know, but, um, but I, I will say is like just focusing on that, that micro level, you know, if it's, if it's one or two people who want it go for them, you know, mm. if you, if you have like a team of 20 people and only two people really are responsive there, there it is. That's it. Those are the people you should pour into. Before we get back to the rest of today's episode, I got to tell you, the Overflow Worship Conference 2022 is coming. Let me tell you about one of our speakers. So, 
Last year, we had Mike Harland, who is the former lead of Lifeway Worship. He's a worship pastor. He's an author. He's amazing. And I tell you what, you guys told us so. We had countless people saying, Mike Harlan's sessions were so amazing. We hope to have him back. Well, guess what? Because of popular demand and because we also love him so much, he's coming back. So Mike Harlan will be here again this year for part two. So if you were there last year, don't tune us out and think, oh, it's the same thing. No way. It's part two. It's the continuation. So you don't want to miss it. Friends, this conference is for worship leaders and entire worship teams, and you want to get yourself there. October 7th and 8th in Wilmer, Minnesota. All the details are on our website, including tickets at overflowworship.com. I'm excited for our people to to listen to this conversation because it's it's a pain point. It's a big pain point for people to feel like I I am failing at this because mm. people aren't engaging, right? And they have a heart for you know pouring into people and this you know raising up disciples. Um, and it, there's just it's met with uh, they hit a wall. And so yeah. I think that just reminding everybody that there you have you know, the ability and the freedom to, like you said, say, ah, it's okay. It's not working. It doesn't mean that it won't. We'll just have to find something <laughs> that will. It doesn't mean we can't. We just have to find something that does work. So mm. um, I think that's that's so good. And what you talked about earlier about, um, you know, fruit, it just reminds me of like, you'll know them by their fruit, you know? Mm-hmm. And like, we do put so much emphasis on external uh, fruit of like, you know, in the music industry and the song releasing world, is there streams? Is there revenue? Is there, you know, like are people listening to it? And obviously those are indicators that maybe a song is impacting people, right? Mm-hmm. Like, but it's, it's not, it's, it's not what's important. And yeah. we need to, um, as, as leaders, worship pastors, get people, um, help people get back to that mentality of like what this is really about and just constantly reminding ourselves too, right? (laughs) Ourselves and the people we serve with. So um, yeah, this is so good. Is there anything else on this topic that you'd like to add before we finish up our conversation today? Man, well, I mean, just to the point that you just made, you know, I, I think that really coming back to the heart of worship is realizing that, you know, worship is not something that we do for God. It's not just something we do for God, but it, it's people that we become for his glory. Hmm. And and that means, you know, Jesus says like, this is what glorifies my father that you bear much fruit. But then hmm. what does he say P- that you bear much fruit, proving yourselves to be my disciples. Hmm. So this is, this is what gives my father glory that you bear much fruit, which is a sign of discipleship. Mm -hmm. And we sing about it all the time. Glory, this glory, that and worship look like God, we want your glory to fall. We want to give you glory, but it's like, you know, singing songs, gathering corporately together. It's beautiful. God loves it. But, but really what glorifies him is the fruit of discipleship. Mm -hmm. And I think that in our worship culture, you know, we, you know, I like, I love the idea and the beauty of what we've seen in great awakenings and revivals of the past. Um, but I think our culture now in, in the 21st century really eats it up because we, we like love the idea of the and suddenly moment, the instant mm-hmm. gratification. Mm-hmm. Um, and the reality is, is that the word revival, like, although it's in the church's history, it's not really a part of its origin. Like Jesus doesn't ever say that word, but he does talk about making disciples a lot, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I love the, our ideas of it and what it means. Like I would love for God to pour out a spirit and do the and suddenly thing. But I I, I believe that, that, you know, what we're going to see in this decade is a revival again, that looks less like signs, wonders, the prophetic, all of these things, will be a part of it. But I believe that the signs of true revival in this season are going to look like love, joy, peace, mm. patience, kindness, yeah. goodness, et cetera. Like, yeah. and I believe that is, um, that that's, what's not just going to pivot the entire church, but that, that is what's going to shift culture on a global scale. That's going to go mm. beyond the four walls of the church. Um, right. And, and so that's really 
yeah, that's my heart to see that happen in the, the worship, uh, worship world, worship communities at churches. Mm-hmm. Um, God wants to reshape the industry right now as a whole. Yeah. Um, and, um, I definitely don't have all the answers taking it day by day, trying to walk in humility as a young guy. Um, mm-hmm. but I, I definitely feel, um, a deep calling to, to kind of ring that bell, um, and to say, yeah. Hey, like, let's focus on the fruit. Um, mm-hmm. and, and here's an easy thing going back to the practicality for, for your listeners. Yeah. Um, like if you, if you just want to like, say you have one, two, three people who are in your community and they're like, Hey, I'm hungry for discipleship. I want, like, I want someone I can be accountable to, who can pour into me, whatever it looks like a great, an easy way to like begin just conversations is we're, we have the, the fruit of the spirit listed out for us. And mm-hmm. I feel like for every single one of us, we can look at that and read that and highlight one or two fruits of the spirit that we know deep down that, that we lack. Mm-hmm. Like for me personally, like, um, it's as an Enneagram eight, I don't know if you know the Enneagram, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> you know, but as an Enneagram eight, like I've had to lean into gentleness again and again, and that has been my weak point. And I've had to say, mm-hmm. God, help me be gentle. Mm-hmm. That's that fruit of the spirit. And so what discipleship and relationships with mentors above me, you know, parallel, whatever, just in that space, that's been the formative thing for me is to say, okay, I'm highlighting this fruit that I need to see more of in my life. Mm-hmm. And then I pull people into having those conversations about how to grow there. So I'll, practically, I just say, hey, list out the fruit of the spirit, highlight the one or two that you're bad at <laughs> and find <laughs> yeah. someone that you can grow in it with. Yes, that's so, so good. Thank you yeah. for that. That's so, so good. And I I imagine that, um, you know, this conversation that we're having, it's it's definitely seems like it's a huge piece of your your heartbeat for, for ministry and for people. And I imagine that bleeds over into the songs that you write. Yeah. And um, so you've released a lot in the last how many months? I don't know, but I noticed on Spotify several singles. So you yeah. have been busy. And so why don't you just tell everyone a little bit bit about maybe the most recent one, Unconditional, and yeah. and then about your up and coming um, album release that's yeah. on the horizon. Well, um, yeah, a few things. I'm, uh, um, let me say this, I because I feel prompted by the Lord. Um, I, I turned 28 tomorrow. Um, and so if you would have asked me um, at the age of 18, a decade ago, uh, you know, mm-hmm. when I would release my debut album, it, it, then I'd been like, definitely not 28. I definitely would have released it way before then. Mm-hmm. And now in hindsight, I'm just like, you know what? Like, God, you're so great. You're so merciful. Like, mm-hmm. I'm so glad that this is the season where I'm releasing a debut album. And so if there's listeners and people out there creating music or who want to, or feel like you're a step behind, 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 or you're mm-hmm. lagging, I just want to encourage you and just say, like, my perspective has shifted and changed. I'm to a place where I'm about to release my debut album, and I'm so glad that it wasn't sooner. So, I don't know. I just mm-hmm. felt prompted to say that um, yeah. uh, for anyone who's listening. Um, God's got you right where you need mm-hmm. to be, um, and so His timing's really good. Um, and so, yeah. yeah, so I am, I am releasing, um, uh, I've kind of finished up releasing these series of singles, um, uh, since starting in August. And, um, this is my debut album. Um, it's like some songs I've been sitting on for a while, a catalog of songs and lots and lots more to come. But, um, yeah, the album is coming in, and we're trying to set a date for, for May. So if you're interested, people want to check it out, they can go follow on Spotify and they'll, or socials or whatever. Yeah. And they'll, they'll know when it comes out. But really, the focus of the album is, um, gosh, I mean, like, from, for example, you mentioned Unconditional, which is my latest single I released a month or so ago. Um, and that's just a song, um, just that uh, the whole focus is, is talking about. It's really inspired by Revelation 21, which says someday there's 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 a time, you know, we're going to be in paradise in heaven, you know, we're, mm. we're, we're with Jesus, so there's no more pain, no more suffering, no more tears. Um, uh, but the reality is, is we live on this side of eternity and all of that stuff is present. There's a mm. lot of suffering. There's a lot of pain. Um, but um, the worth of Jesus doesn't change at all in the midst mm. of those things. Yeah. Um, the, in the one of the, the the lyrics in the chorus is the way that I feel doesn't change who you are. So hallelujah, unconditional. Hmm. And, and that's what the song is, the heartbeat of it. It's just to say, 
you know, nothing, no circumstance is going to change my worship because um, my feelings can't define the worth of Jesus. Mm-hmm. Um, his worth actually is what's going to shift my feelings because he's worthy enough to pay the price for the mess that I've got going on inside mm-hmm. of me. So long story short, like it's just a song about like loving Jesus unconditionally and, and, and continuing to, to recognize his worth mm-hmm. um, in the midst of difficulty. And, and the album is really... Uh, the 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 album is called Behold and Become, mm-hmm. um, and um, you know it's just the the idea idea of worship. I think is that it's to mm. behold him and to become like him, like mm. Isaiah. Yeah. We see where he's like you know in the uh, 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 the year of Uzziah where he's seeing God high and lifted up, and then he says, "Woe is me! I'm a man with unclean lips." And they touch the mm. coal, and he recognizes God's beauty and glory, and he's like, "Oh my gosh, I'm I'm blown away by this." But then he's but then in that moment, what happens is he's beholding the the beauty of who God is. But then in that moment, he's changed, and then he says, "Send me, I will go." Mm-hmm. Um, he says, "Who will I send?" He says, "Send me, Lord." And so for me, that's what worship is. And the, I would say this whole album, the songs are really just focused. Um, they feel a little bit me focused <laughs> because it's like it's it, mm-hmm. it's this introspective, transformative thing about yeah. what what the gospel is, and they're very gospel like the like every song. If you're like, what is this? I'm like, well, this is where Jesus teaches on this. Jesus, mm. this, Jesus, that, Jesus, that. And I really wanted to just lean into the person of who Jesus is, the gospel, mm. the good news, and so that's kind of what what the whole album's about. And I'm excited. That's amazing. Well, I can't wait to hear it when it comes out. And for everybody listening, make sure that you uh, hop on Spotify and look up Austin Ludwig and listen to the singles that he's released in the last uh, several months. And then just follow along on socials or Spotify so that you can um, make sure you know when the album comes out. And we will link everything in the show notes as well. So people, you can just click and get taken right there. It'll be super easy. (laughs) So Austin, thank you so much for being here today and for taking the time to encourage our listeners. I know that many people will be blessed. So thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you, Andrea. It's, um, and I said that right, Andrea. Yeah, you did. Making Good job. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'll throw my Southern spin on it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thank you so much. It's, it's been a pleasure. And, and I just pray that, uh, yeah, just that the Lord breathes on everything that you're doing and everything that your listeners are, are, are doing as well. I think, um, it's, it's beautiful what he's doing on the earth right now. And so mm-hmm. just blessings to you and everyone who hears this. Thank you. Thank you so much. You've been listening to the Overflow Worship Podcast. If you enjoy our podcast, please take a moment and leave us a five-star rating and a written review, which helps us reach more people. New episodes are released every other Monday. So until next time, thank you for listening.